Forget chatbots. Forget image generators. The real AI battle isn't happening inside apps. It's happening here. In less than 48 hours, NVIDIA launched a full-scale offensive, $1 billion into Nokia, seven new supercomputers for the U.S. government, strengthened partnerships with Cisco. This isn't a product strategy. It's a coordinated plan to seize control of the world's digital backbone. Today, we're announcing that the Department of Energy is partnering with NVIDIA to build seven new AI supercomputers to advance our nation's science. While everyone talks about chatbots, NVIDIA is building the machines that make them possible. Its new generation, the Grace Blackwell architecture and DGX Spark, packs the power of a hundred MacBook Pros working at once into a desktop box. And in 2025, Washington commissioned NVIDIA to build seven national AI supercomputers with Oracle Cloud and the Department of Energy officially for science, climate, and fusion research, unofficially for technological sovereignty. Because NVIDIA no longer just sells chips, it provides the nervous system of the digital world. From CUDA to its servers to entire data centers, dependency has become a form of soft power on steroids. After conquering data centers, NVIDIA is coming for the network. With a billion-dollar stake in Nokia, it's targeting the meeting point between compute and connectivity. Together, they're launching AIRAN, a radio access network where intelligence lives inside the antennas themselves, not in the cloud. Their platform, Aerial ARC Pro, is basically a brain at the base of every antenna, merging GPUs and telecom processors to make decisions in real time. T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon are already preparing AIRAN trials for 2026. For Nokia, it's a rebirth. For NVIDIA, it's the gateway to AI native 6G, the moment networks stop being pipes and start becoming brains. 6G isn't just faster internet, it's the first cognitive infrastructure. Algorithms now handle beamforming, that's a network's ability to follow a user like a spotlight follows an actor, and they predict traffic before it happens. The goal, sub-millisecond latency, 10 times more bandwidth, 100 times more connected devices. That's what will make autonomous robotaxis, cognitive factories, and remote surgery possible. For operators, it means lower costs and new revenue streams. But beyond economics, it's a philosophical shift. The network no longer carries intelligence. It becomes intelligence. Behind this technical revolution is a raw power struggle. The United States lost the 5G battle to China. Huawei and ZTE control more than half the global market. What NVIDIA is doing now is responding to China's hardware dominance with America's software strength. The 5th G war was about hardware, the 6th G war will be about cognition. Huawei builds the antennas. NVIDIA wants to own the brains that make them think. Europe, meanwhile, talks about technological sovereignty, but still depends on US chips for its own 6G projects. Behind patents and standards lies a new form of soft power, because the one who controls the infrastructure of intelligence controls the economy. And 6G will be political long before it becomes commercial. AI native 6G isn't just a technological leap. It's a new infrastructure for civilization. In defense, autonomous drone fleets, encrypted communications, networks that can't be jammed. In industry, collaborative robots and digital twins. Factories mirrored in real time. In our cities, AI-driven traffic, coordinated emergency response, connected healthcare, but the more the network sees, the more it controls. Every gain in efficiency comes at a loss of privacy, and nations without AI 6G risk digital isolation. The new divide isn't social, it's infrastructural. In 2025, NVIDIA is no longer just a chip company. It's becoming the architect of the connected world. 
It's bet that mastering intelligence, from data centers to antennas, will soon matter more than owning the silicon itself. Because A, I doesn't live in the cloud. It lives in cables, in waves, in batteries, and chips. And whoever owns that infrastructure owns the future. Subscribe to The Gradient. We don't follow the news, we decode it.